بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر ویورز السلام علیکم آئی ایم یو ہوز فیصل رضا خان اینڈ یو آر واچنگ فور سائٹ ویورز سنس مور دین فور منتھس انلیجیٹیمیٹ اسٹیٹ آف اسرائیل اینڈ اٹس اکوپیشن فورسز کنٹینیوڈ دیئر ایٹروسٹیز وار کرائمز اینڈ جینوسائڈ اکراس پیلسٹائن پرٹیکولرلی ان گازا اکارڈنگ ٹو دا پیلسٹینین منسٹری آف ہیلتھ ان گازا مور دین ٹوینٹی ایٹ تھاؤزینڈ انوسینٹ سولینس ڈائڈ بٹ آلسو Uh, more than 68,000 injured, while more than uh, 2 million displaced. After the inhuman bombardment and attacks on uh, northern and central Gaza, now Israeli occupation forces started airstrikes and threatens the southern Gaza people, particularly when uh, we are talking about the couple of days back when Israeli attacks intensified on uh, Khan Yunus and siege of Nasser Hospital. As a result, uh, 10,000 of uh, the innocent Palestinians who took refuge in that hospital and 450 were the patients along with 300 doctors and paramedics. Now they have to evacuate because uh, occupation forces stormed in that hospital. UN and the world leaders are warning Israel time and again, but to no avail. Qatar, Egypt and Turkey, they are trying hard to have truce. Along with that, Australia, New Zealand and Canada, they are time and again calling for ceasefire. Egypt even threatened to end the Camp David Accord that was done in 1978. Along with that, South Africa once again approached International Court of Justice to seek additional measures to halt Israel to attack on Rafah. Now this is the intensified situation and to discuss this grave situation we have in our studios uh, Dr. Noor Fatma. Uh, she is uh, the senior analyst. Most welcome to you uh, Dr. Noor. And uh, online joining us we have uh, Dr. Wasim Ishaq. He is the international relations expert. Uh, most welcome to you Dr. Wasim. My first question to you Dr. Noor that uh, illegitimate state of Israel and its occupation forces, they are continued their attacks on innocent civilians and now uh, they have planned to prepare a ground assault on the last border city of Rafah. So how do you see this whole aspect and the grave situation? This is very unfortunate situation which we are seeing now for the last three months or four months now. Uh, more than 11,000 Palestinians are killed and this is I think the most height of uh, kind of violation of uh, human rights is going on in the contemporary world which is which is of course a very very um, a grave situation which uh, which is being uh, as I, as you said also which is being observed which is uh, which is of course being monitored by all international forces international countries and leaders the point is the corridors uh, starting from uh, the power corridors starting from the US to the UN to Arab League to OIC they all have this concern that the war should be ended and the prime responsibility in terms of the guardian of the nations is the United Nations also. They are all the time, look at the Secretary General's uh, point of view, all the time he is giving that this is a grave situation. But unfortunately, there is no one basically to stop them going further day by day and uh, having this all kind of uh, strategies uh, day by day. Uh, this is a very grave situation. And even Russia now said that you need to come fast towards uh, the solution of one state or two state. Uh, otherwise, uh, this is going to be a danger of uh, security for rest of the world. Mm. So this is a situation where, uh, of course, th I, I would say the sensitivity is prevailing around the world. The, part, the point is uh, the most influential uh, minds and the actors are those which I mentioned as a power corridor. So, uh, so uh, uh, Dr. Shabba, when uh, if uh, Israel starts ground operation at Rafah, what would be the ultimate future of 1.4 million uh, people densely populated Rafah city? And uh, uh, what would be the ultimate uh, uh, human angle? Because they are going to be m genocide or might be uh, uh, starvation would be there. And uh, whether Israel wants to push them into Egypt, that would be another crisis. Yes, and already, you know, the Palestinian refugees are already already there to home. United Nations even even uh, even have mentioned that they have a right to come back to their their home back, but uh, it was not allowed by the uh, Israel. 
So, it will create a, another massacre, another, another whole kind of uh, situation, a very uh, grave situation where, word, where I, I think the Israel should not be uh, doing that. And how we should pressurize, how we should actually so stop uh, the Israel not to do that, that is only the authority. And that authority is, is at the moment is with the, all those power who can just stop Israel by giving them there should be some kind of a terms on which they should talk immediately with Israel. Definitely, your, your point well taken. Uh, Dr. Wasim, when we are talking about uh, the recent developments in uh, uh, Gaza, particularly when uh, Israel threatening uh, to attack Rafah. So, uh, France, Turkey and other countries rejected Israeli intentions. Uh, along with that, uh, Egypt has uh, uh, taken a step forward and warned Israel that uh, it is going to end uh, that bilateral uh, peace treaty that was Camp David Accord uh, of 1978, where if uh, Israel intensify attack on uh, Rafah particularly. Faisal, thank you very much. But let me uh, start by saying that the post-World War II international system and the so-called rule-based international order is crumbling. We have seen the limits of U.S. diplomacy and the limits of U.S. deterrence. Unfortunately, the situation in Gaza as we stand today, more than 30,000 people killed and almost the similar amount which has been dumped under the rebels, 11,000 children killed and around 60,000 innocent people who have been injured. We started from a limited offensive in the northern Gaza then it went to the central Gaza, and now it has reached to the southern Gaza. My analysis indicate, my research indicate, that the United States has given a tacit approval to Israel to actually not only eliminate Hamas, but do whatever they feel like, and they have given a clear indication that after the war ends in Gaza, starting from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea, it will be all Israeli forces which will be occupying and securing this area. That means that Mr. Netanyahu has got the Dr. Vaseem, Dr. Vaseem, when you are uh, you are saying that, it means that uh, uh, that uh, tacit approval given by United States means that Israel wants to capture, occupy Gaza as well, and to expel all those who are living in the, at their territory. Exactly. This is what I was coming uh, just now. The tacit approval is indicative from uh, two things: the Mr. Blinken's visit. Just few uh, weeks ago, actually, it says that the United States would not like to see the war extended to Ramadan. That means they have just given this one month to wind up their operation. And in this one month, what was the initial plan of uh, Israel? Because the United States never objected onto that openly. That was to push all the Palestinians living in Gaza, uh, outside Rafah, to the Senhai. This is what where the Egyptian government has not agreed so far, but the way it has initiated a process of operations against the hospital yesterday and the already given warning to all those who have been displaced and about more than 1.2 million population now in stranded in Rafah. So Israel has given them ultimatum that they are is starting a full-fledged military operations. So they just should just go wherever they want to go, but they're not allowed to go to central and northern Gaza. That means it is indicative that Israel wants to push them across Rafah to Sinai. This is where the Egyptian government has not agreed. But we have also seen a renewed diplomatic engagement where the Turkish president has just recently visited Egypt and also the king of Jordan has visited the United States. Both countries are concerned about the Israeli future intentions. But my research indicates that Israeli, Israel is fully prepared to push them into Sinai and control the entire Gaza from the uh, Jordan River to Mediterranean Sea. So, uh, Dr. Vaseem, when we are come. talking about when we are talking about that Egypt is uh, actually uh, threatening Israel or warning Israel that uh, they are going to end Camp David Accord of 1978, it was basically diplomatic and security cooperation instrument uh, between the two. Uh, one illegitimate state, another is the. Uh, the true state. What, what you are foreseeing that uh, is the conflict escalating uh, outside Gaza into the region? As far as Egypt and Israel are concerned, I don't foresee that there is going to be an armed conflict between the, these two countries. However, if the refugees are pushed across Rafah into Sinai, 
it will have a huge national security implication for Egypt, for which Egypt is not prepared and Egypt has declared it as a red line. So therefore, as a consequence of expulsion of refugees into Sinai, likelihood that the tension would grow between Egypt and Israel. To begin with, Israel is not prepared to have any conflict with uh, Israel is not prepared to have any conflict with Egypt. However, the situation then subsequently might escalate where the confrontation might occur. These are the apprehensions of Egypt which have been conveyed to the United States and which has been conveyed to all the regional partners and the Arab allies. So is, uh, Egypt is very much concerned from the fallout of escalating tension between the Gaza and as the operation is moving towards south. Your point well taken. Uh, Dr. Noor, when we are talking about escalation in conflict, do, do you think that uh, Israel intensified it, its attacks on Lebanon? There are more than 12 attacks so far and then s more than seven attacks on Syria as well. When Egypt is talking about that, it means that uh, Israel has some sort of intentions to escalate that conflict in a larger perspective of greater Israel. Well, definitely. Uh, look, uh, Israel, um, uh, Israel's uh, the plan of that uh, greater Israel is very much now manifested through their, this, this kind of action. But at the moment, what we see is they just want to have the, this um, impression uh, totally uh, eliminating from the world that it is the only Israel, there is no other. A nation, there is no other country, and they are going to have a one nation, a one country, and that an Israeli country. So, uh, what if Israel attacks Rafah and solidify the occupation of Gaza, grabbing uh, approximately whole of the Palestine because uh, no Palestine left except West Bank? So, uh, end of the humanitarian aid, which is already not there. So, uh, what would be the ultimate scenario? It will be quite grave scenario. I think uh, the world should uh, sh should not uh, allow that situation to actually happen, because uh, ultimately, you see, every time uh, we see this uh, United Nations uh, appeal that we are short of medicines or short of uh, all kind of a staff and uh, all, 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 and of course the help, the point is that uh, why we sh it has to be stopped somewhere. Definitely so, has with to be all kind of a genocide, with all kind of a, a killing of a Palestinian has no meaning no, of this war. Obviously. So, this fight, fight has to be stopped. So, why not now? The all already much damage or much have been damaged already. So, why not now and why not to sit? Ultimately, they have to sit and they have to talk. They have to be negotiations. So, ultimately, they have to sit and they have to be uh, uh, two state. For me, which I observe now, it will be uh, coming out as a solution of two-state solution. So, do you think that this two-state is really a two-state? Because when we are talking about uh, two-state, it means that we are legitimizing one state. We that are is not. Israel, that uh, is we are not. We are not. But uh, uh, I don't think that in the near future there is a possibility of only one state or survival of one state, given the situation. So. If at this time uh, the area which is particularly Gaza, Jerusalem, West Bank, which belongs to purely Palestinian people, if it is given to them and with the right of the vote and as a whole state, there but is the not point an is of doubt on that, really. Right. So the issue is that, uh, of course, the bordering issue is a much bigger issue. Security issue is a much bigger issue. But that's why uh, what I said in the beginning that we have these corridors to make this. We can just talk about uh, these things. We can feel bad about it. We can have, we can generate the discourses, but actually implementers are those people which we were referred already. Definitely. So wh why, uh, why uh, Rafa uh, now it is uh, the last refuge for millions of Palestinians, um, a designated safe zone uh, uh, whether Israel wants to push them to Egypt, as we have already discussed. So, uh, what was its intention from day one? Because they have the intention to push them all to because, out of Gaza. Uh, because, as uh, uh, Dr. Basim also said, that uh, because they have this impression uh, that they have a clean chitar, they have a kind of a shelter given by all kind of power corridors that they can just move on and. Within a shorter time, they need to have a more victory and victory, and then just just. But on the other side, we should also know that there are so many in, uh, institutions, organization, and the people who are coming on the road also to to influence and to have a pressure on this. Um, uh, uh, of course, this uh, Israel. So we need just one nod 
from these corridors to stop it. Mm -hmm. so your, your, otherwise, your, yes. Your point well taken. Uh, Dr. Vaseem, as uh, uh, Dr. Noor Fatma said, that uh, there must have to be a two-state solution, but might be in future there would be one. So what would be the one state, the greater one or the Palestinian state? Let's first of all see it uh, historically that when the state of Israel was formed at that time, there was a solution for two state solutions, the two states. But unfortunately, see the events following the Oslo Accord. When there was a guarantee given by the United States that the two state of Israel and state of Palestine living side by side, then who violated those accords? It was not the Palestinians, it was the Israeli side who violated those accords. But we have seen Netanyahu in last about uh, 20 years coming in and out. He is a far right, extremist who does not want to see the state of Palestine in the adjacent vicinity. So therefore, he has always been trying to do away with the uh, state of Palestine. But we have seen there are certain international commitments and international limitations because the United States is the main pro was the main proponent of uh, the Oslo Accord. So the Mr. Blinken and Mr. Biden has vocally said that they want eventually to come back to two-state solution, which Mr. Netanyahu has so far rejected. And he says for him, for, for the time being, security is more important and that security would only emerge when its war aim is by military defeat of Hamas would occur. So in that context, he is just focusing on the military defeat of Hamas. That's why he is legitimizing the attack on Rafa now because the hostages have not been returned. The military might of Hamas has not been broken. And we have seen that Hamas by large it still remains a very formidable force. So in that context, he has built a narrative that unless he defeats Hamas, both in the military domain as well as in the political domain, he will not be able to secure Israel. However, we have seen a lot has changed in terms of public opinion, both in the United States as well as in the European capitals. A lot has changed after the ICJ ruling as well. Now we have seen uh, the recent statement so, so you are talking about ICJ ruling. So, uh, uh, Dr. Noor Fatma, when we are talking about how do you see uh, the Israel's blatant uh, defiance uh, from uh, the provisional measures outlined by the International Court of Justice, uh, uh, do you think that uh, the in, uh, they, they are violating each and everything, including the interim orders of uh, the ICJ? Exactly, they are violating. And this is a very marvelous a kind of cornerstone decision taken by the ICJ. Like, but the point is that uh, when you are not listening and you are on that all barbaric uh, actions, so whether it is uh, um, International Court of Justice, whether it is United Nations, whether any country, whether, uh, um, whether uh, all stakeholders, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter to him at this time because his idea is only to have a greater Israel and to have to, to curb all kind of a Palestinian rights there. So that's what they, they, he is on. But so a anything, is anything would be because uh, South Africa approached again for uh, uh, having additional measures. So do you think that court is going to give that and halt Israel because they have not given any ruling re regarding uh, any ceasefire or something like uh, like that? Because it's not their mandate. Their mandate is just to uh, to to give the ruling and to it is a moral basically a moral thing uh, which they have ordered. But uh, they they are not directly controlling that state of course. So any and additional measures you are f foreseeing? I think once the this escalation, de-escalation will come only then when the situation will come. So uh, is it correct that the Western countries are uh, the real uh, uh, perpetrators behind the Palestinian killings and whatever is going on in Gaza because they are supporting Israel right from the first day and they have never opted for ceasefire except some statements? Uh, because when you don't condemn it is openly. When do not use the diplomatic uh, sources and diplomatic measures to stop it. When you have the powers and you're not using it. When you are not cutting all kind of, uh, uh, the, uh, for instance, relations, economic relations, right? This economy is, 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 is your lifeline, of course. And symbolically, we are just, uh, uh, if we are, uh, we are trying to avoid certain things, that is just, just symbolically, right? So it's, uh, you have that uh, kind of a power of negotiations the, through the economy. When you are not doing it, actually you are supporting it. If you aren't even saying it indirectly, it is implicitly meaning that you are supporting it, but he is doing it at this moment. You are very right, very right. Uh, well elaborated, Dr. Noor Fatma. Thank you very much for your You're presence welcome. in the studios. Thank you so nice of you.
Dr. Vaseem, when we are talking about uh, Western uh, countries, uh, they are the one uh, who have halted or suspended the funding of UN agency uh, for Palestinian refugees. And uh, they are the one who are supplying arms, ammunition and weapons to Israel and billions of dollars. Along with that, uh, they are not uh, saying anything on truce on, or a ceasefire and they are not facilitating it. It means they are facilitators of Israel and they want whatever is happening in Gaza. This is a very unfortunate scenario and very unfortunate situation. We have seen this is the double standard of that rule-based international order, whereby they are not only supplying the arms and munitions, they are giving a diplomatic and moral support and a tacit approval of uh, genocide in Gaza. This is very unfortunate. But we have seen that public opinion has changed a lot in the United States, in UK and other European capitals. And we have seen a lot of people coming out on the streets in support of Palestinians. This is a great change. And what we have seen since Second World War onwards, the, when the public opinion has changed, the governments have been forced because they believe in democracy and the freedom of expression. So therefore, the governments have been forced to change their stance. So I think we are fast moving towards that situation where these governments would soon be facing their public. And as 2024, most of the countries will be facing elections. So therefore, I think the, probably the peace in Palestine as well as peace in Israel would eventually become the election slogan for, in most of the countries. So therefore, for the time being, we are facing challenges and difficulties. However, as we proceed, the more pragmatism would appear and these Western governments would apply pressure to immediately for cessation of hostilities and also a long-standing durable ceasefire and eventual creation of two states which have been promised to the Palestinians since last 75 years. So do you, uh, do you foresee that the two-state solution uh, is going to be, is knocking at the door, it's going to be happen, or uh, uh, it seems that the scenario is going to be one-sided? Two-state solution is indispensable for this region. This has been promised, this has promised time and again. But we see, as per the existing international order, out of five permanent security council members, all, almost all are unanimous now on this two-state solution barring with whatever their interpretation may, might Because have. when we are talking about two-state solution and the state of Palestine, it must be pre-1967 borders it, based upon that. And also, it is important that uh, that must have to be adhered what promised to the Palestinians. So, lots of territories which are under the occupation of illegitimate state of Israel, uh, they have to return to the Palestinians. Do you think that Israel is going to do that? There is a greater degree of convergence among the five permanent members of Security Council and also the non-permanent members. There is absolutely no questions on the legitimacy of two-state solution. Means the Palestine and Israel living side by side on pre-1967 borders. This is writing on the wall. This might happen in times to come. But nobody can change the status of this agreement unilaterally. But Israel is no in no mood today because the, the current government is far more extremist and current government is in really no position because domestically that does not have any support from the state institutions as well as from the Israeli public. So therefore, this war has become a compulsion for Netanyahu's survival. But as we see in times to come when the stability returns in Gaza, stability returns in West Bank and some more elections, we would find some pragmatic leadership coming into Israel, hopefully in times to come. And that would certainly revert back to the two-state solution with pre-1967 borders, both states living side by side. You're quite well taken, Dr. Vaseem. Uh, viewers, we welcome uh, Saira Ijaz in our studios. She is the uh, senior analyst. Most welcome to you, Saira. Uh, do you uh, not think that uh, the United Nations, the international community, uh, even the lots of international organizations, they are deliberately failed to hurt Israel's uh, brutalities in uh, the Gaza and uh, West Bank? And along with that, they never intend to protect innocent Palestinians. Do you think so? It's like that? I would like to say in this regard is that for any peace process, a political uh, and uh, a political umbrella is needed and required. Rather to name out, uh, you know, specifically to different or uh, international organizations like UN, like other NATO and other such. I think there is a need of having a separate 
political um, large uh, setup to address this horrendous uh, conflict between Israel and Palestine. One thing. Rather, Means United Nation or the Security Council weakened uh, in that perspective. Yes, I think that uh, what I so far uh, is in my opinion is that there should be a separate political entity, political umbrella, political organization, which is acceptable. What could be that? It could be anything. Definitely, superpower will be the part of it. Definitely, other regional powers will be it. But most of the superpowers are at the sideline of Israel. But again, there is, is. But there are certain powers. There are global systems work in another in in a very different dynamics. States work for their interests. So I think, and everybody is closely watching. There are many other Western states as well. So I think now there is the time of activism that we should and the everybody sports this conflict uh, should raise the, its voice for some larger organization which is acceptable to both uh, parties acceptable to palestinians acceptable to israel's i think and so come far up with no a viable solution of solution states. and okay. one thing um, in addition to it i would say that it is a it is a war of narratives yeah. and every um, uh, people uh, bo on both sides uh, they believe uh, that their narrative, their perception is right and the other one is wrong. Now let's understand the main conflict. But what about the humanitarian aspect? 28,000 people killed, uh, 68,000 injured and uh, uh, lots of more than 2 million they are displaced from their own territory. So, so what about that? Yes, I'm coming towards it. That's what I'm trying to say is that Israel is way times more powerful, it has the sport of West, it has this, uh, those resources. That's why there is a reason, but there are sane voices within Israel as well and within at in, in international community as well who want peace. But for any peace process, there should be some mechanism should be uh, developed. And definitely, definitely your point well taken. Dr. Basim, when we are talking about uh, and Ill, this uh, illegitimate state of Israel, who will get Israel accountable for its crimes against humanity? A genocide, mass murders, ethnic cleansing, who will? If we see uh, starting from the Bosnian uh, Yugoslavian war 1995, I think uh, this is the recent time example which I can just quote. The International Court of Justice and International Criminal Court had been very, very proactive in trying all those who were indicted for the war crimes. And we have seen all those communist leaders were tried by war crimes, tribunals, and then they were punished, and they all perished from this world. So the time is about to come again. However, the time is now, for, at, at this moment, is on the Israeli side, because the sole superpower is on the Israeli side. The times would certainly change as the global system under transition further moves. So therefore, what I can suspect that as Russia, China together raise more voice and become more proactive towards the two-state solution, and eventually when we reach to a final settlement of state of Israel and state of Palestine, probably that would the time, that would be the right time when all those who have committed war crimes in violation of ICJ's previous orders, and I'm sure ICJ is going to give another verdict in a few weeks' time regarding the recent genocide which is being committed by Israel in Rafah, then the time would certainly change for those who have committed war crimes. And I think the current Israeli prime minister is the one such war criminal of our times. So he would certainly be tried by the International Criminal Court or the ICJ and will be brought to justice to create and set an example in post-World War II that, and the post-collapse of the Soviet Union that no one is above law and no one can create a barbaric havoc the way he has done with the uh, people living in Gaza. So, uh, Saira, when we are talking about just uh, um, a report was surfaced by the Committee of Protective Journalists, uh, CPG, uh, that uh, 72 out of 99 journalists across the world uh, in 2023 were Palestinians reporting Israel's war on Gaza. They were killed brutally by Israeli forces. So how do you see even the journalists are uh, targeted, human rights activists targeted, uh, UN agency people, they were killed by Israel. So what we call war crime? 
there is no second opinion about it that this is a clear violation of international law human it's it, it's a clear you know cl ethnic cleansing and the of 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 uh, people living in you know who are obsessed who are weaker who are not uh, technologically advanced there is no doubt about it but what i'm trying to raise the point over here is that there is a time for activism regarding non violence activism and human development and human uh, rights activism uh, should be initiated on both sides until unless the people the same voices within the both intellectuals academics media persons in palestine and in israel they will not start this campaign and they will not start raising this activism literally i am telling you that outside world cannot do much for their help there is no doubt about it that so much media people they have lost not only their lives they have lost their families <coughs> they have lost their belongings so i think the damage which has been done so far will have lifelong impact the sooner this conflict will resolve will stop sooner there will be some cease fire that's the better but i am telling you the damage which has been done it, it it's 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 long lasting you are you are very right you are very right dr wasim when Uh, uh, to what extent uh, uh, to what extent uh, the hopes for peace are still alive because egypt qatar turkey and some other countries are trying hard to have truce or cease fire in gaza particularly uh, us also hinted that there are some positive vibes uh, for any sort of a cease fire so do you think that uh, uh, there would be any hope for peace in gaza and overall in palestine the hope for peace had always been there and we have seen in last 20 years there were several intifadas which subsequently then ended in a truce but unfortunately we have seen that gaza since 2007 has been under siege and the palestinians have been degraded they have been humiliated and they have been tortured by the incumbent israeli governments in the past and especially the netanyahu's government now so this is the dilemma while the peace efforts have been done in the past the peace efforts are going on even now and what we have seen the small truce which happened for the limited exchange of prisoners it was celebrated all around both by israel as well as palestinians but unfortunately the war mongering of uh, prime minister netanyahu because this is war is a tool for his political ends to gain a legitimacy for his continuous staying in power he has lost credibility at home and he has lost credibility at the international level so for him this war is a war of survival it is not a war of security and anything else as it has turned out to be however what we have seen in last few weeks the qatar so, so uh, dr wasim uh, dr wasim why united nations and international community uh, just intend to manage this conflict rather to address the root cause of this conflict the problem is that their uh, perspective i mean the israeli perspective has been that they were the victims of this war on october the 7th okay partly that is true but they are actually negating what has been going on since last 20 years with the people in gaza so it had to happen as a consequence the united states the united nations has tried ever since this conflict started at several forums the how, how many security councils sittings and how many security council resolution unfortunately which have been vetoed by the united states so the international community and especially the russia and china and the arab regional countries have been doing a shuttle diplomacy while the united states was also should we should give them credit for shuttle diplomacy but that shuttle diplomacy was only to legitimize the israeli actions and only it was one sided it was not uh, committed on two sided because we have seen the humanitarian situation in gaza had been going from bad to worse and what president biden has always been giving his press briefing especially in last uh, one to two weeks he is always concerned about the humanitarian situation so why then why he is not taking concrete actions if he just stops ammunition supplies to uh, uh, israel and stops his political backing in the security council hopefully the war should end the next day so there your point well taken is. dr wasim uh, definitely saira when we are talking about uh, a cease fire or truce uh, uh, canada australia new zealand they have all uh, calling upon cease fire in gaza so do you think that there is some essence in that to have cease fire 
Definitely. It would have um, an impact, international pressures, because the whole uh, international system is, works in a, you know, sphere or the dynamics of cooperation. Mm. Without mm. cooperation, uh, no, even sole power cannot do anything to anyone. So definitely, these are very positive signs and I guess there is a need, again, I am again and again reiterating this thing, that the extremist mindset uh, is there on both sides and it needs to be curbed because without recognition of each other's uh, narratives merit things will not go anywhere we have seen that in uh, international court of justice um, has uh, you know uh, uh, listened uh, uh, to the uh, south initiated by the south africa but they again they don't uh, order the ceasefire because, because that was not their ambit because uh, that, that's that, that not was their ambit so there is a need to overcome the fear uh, the you know to change the behavior but behavior the, of but violence Israel not and not respected fear. the interim order even. interim orders so there is a need to uh, again i am saying that there is a need and there are we have we are listening that there are voices within the israel against their own government as uh, dr wasim also mentioned that uh, netanyahu has is losing very fastly the you know the grip on on the political affairs and he is facing lots of criticism okay, within your, your, your point well taken uh, uh, dr wasim uh, why the world is so reluctant to end israeli uh, brutalities and illegal occupation of Gaza, West Bank and all other territories return uh, their uh, Palestinian territories to them and then go for the two-state solution or recognize their political, uh, human and civil rights. Why is it so? We have to understand that we live in a realist paradigm and realist paradigm works in a power politics and power politics with a stronger one and as I quote Thucydides says the stronger would do what they wish to do and the weaker must do what they are asked to do. So unfortunately, in this international system and international paradigm, the Palestinian position unfortunately has been reasonably weak as compared to Israel. So therefore, Israel has always been dictating the terms of uh, peace. So in, in, in the evolving uh, regional order and the evolving international order, the great powers have realized that if they want to have enduring peace and stability in this region, they have to go by the two-state solution. And two-state solution, what was agreed in Oslo Accord, where the United States themselves was a guarantor. So therefore, there is a need to just implement that. And I think this is now the right time where the US can regain its lost credibility of uh, being a responsible international partner and international guarantor of this peace treaty. So therefore, there could be, when they reach to an agreement, there could be a cessation of hostilities, then gradual confidence building, and then gradual handing over of those areas which were agreed in Oslo Agreement and for the eventual establishment of uh, Palestinian state as well as living side by side with the is state of Israel. So, uh, Dr. Wasim, do you think that uh, uh, what would be your take about that, uh, whether this conflict is going to end, whether there would be peace, whether there would be two-state solution, or Israel is going are going on with its atrocities and attack uh, Rafa, uh, the bordering city of Rafa and push all those Palestinian refugees and uh, Palestinian people from their territory to Sinai or to, uh, to Egypt. As we witnessed today, the war aims of uh, Israel, they are absolutely clear that they want to clear out this Rafa and they have already initiated a process since yesterday. So this is the immediate war aim of uh, Israel and they're not going to back down from here. And the United States has also not shown any objection or the ex explicit objection to this. So therefore, Israeli aim is to push the Palestinians across Rafah into Sinai. Whether it is doable, certainly it is doable, it, but it has a lot of challenges with respect to opening another frontier with uh, Egypt. And it will also bring a lot of uh, difficulties for Israeli national security in terms of the refugee management as well as likelihood of escalation of conflict with the Egypt and Israel. And we have already seen the escalation between Hezbollah and Israel. We have seen the incursions into Syria. We have seen the United States and the United Kingdom jointly conducting operations in Yemen, in Iraq, in Syria. So the situation needs to now be contained. I think a lot has happened. There's a requirement to really contain the situation. 
Definitely. Now, you are absolutely right. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Wasim Isaac, for being with us online. Thank you very much for your uh, extremely candid views. Uh, thank you very much, Saira, for your presence in the studios. Thank you very much for your candid views and uh, deliberations. Uh, uh, viewers, as you have listened to our panelists, and the uh, overall scenario is uh, really a grave one because uh, the situation is very, uh, unfortunately, very alarming as uh, Israel is going to intensify its uh, a ground assault on uh, the bordering city of Rafa. Along with that, uh, uh, the overall region is volatile because Israeli because of the Israeli attacks on Syria and Lebanon as well. Uh, Egypt is calling uh, time and again that it is going to threat uh, its security as well. Uh, so uh, overall, Palestinian crisis intensified. Two-state solution is inevitable if we want to pe have peace in the region, particularly in the Middle East. And this is uh, today's foresight. It's time to sign off. Allah Hafiz Anas.